The quiet, still night is broken by the sounds of warriors at work. The dawn is far from reality as the Kentucky Air National Guard begins the task for a 4 a.m. takeoff. Destination, Zaragoza, Spain. As the early morning sun rises over the horizon, the crew has settled in for the long, slow trip, constantly checking the many gauges, switches, dials, and knobs that guide the lumbering C-130 transport on its way to the old world. Bull runs, matadors, and bullfights are all trademarks of Spain, but team spirit, long hours, and hard work are the traditions of the Kentucky Air National Guard. For the next two weeks, the civil engineers from Kentucky have come to work side by side, elbow to elbow, with the men and women of Zaragoza Air Base as part of the U.S. Air Force's Total Force Program. Colonel Michael Miller of the 406th Combat Support Group explains that any help is welcomed and always needed. I think all the civil engineering units over here hope to get an Air Guard unit in here with prime beef capability to bail them out uh, during the summer, you know, a part of the summer. Our civil engineering efforts are always behind. You could, you could never get ahead, we all know that, uh, and, and, and you're always behind and the high priority projects that pop up continually seem to just make the situation worse and, and make you continue to get farther and farther behind. Although not as glamorous a task as the bullfighting matadors, the civil engineers take their jobs just as seriously. They all have a job to do and each is out to show just how well they can perform in a foreign environment. As Master Sergeant Joe Slank explains, there are many different construction techniques that our people must learn to deal with and adjust to accordingly. The field that they've given us, we have to take out the big boulders that's in it. I mean, it's not uh, good packing material at all that we consider, but yeah, they said rock. uh, all for rocky. Zaragoza is similar to all Air Force bases in that the building and grounds upkeep is a never-ending process. Here at the hospital clinic, several members of the Prime Beef team found the conditions of the exterior walls and roof to be rapidly deteriorating. So they jumped in to complete another of the 25 projects slated for the unit during their two-week stay. Compliments from the clinic administrator, Major Jim Byers, reflect the attitude of the clinic personnel upon seeing the accomplishments of the CE unit from the Bluegrass State. We really impressed very much with the work that y'all did on the back dock there for the paving project. I didn't know there was going to be that much work. And also on the roof, uh, here people have observed and they have worked extremely hard and we really, really appreciate it. There is an air of satisfaction when the job is well done. Tech Sergeant Jim Bush says it best as he describes the completed site survey for the hospital paving project. That's perfect! <laughs> Keeping the various work crews supplied with the proper materials is the responsibility of material control. But on this deployment, that task was more difficult than usual. At a normal U.S. base, equipment, tools, parts, and supplies are kept on hand and are all readily available. However, as Sergeant Bob Hatfield explains, they are not kept here at Zaragoza in great quantities due to the heavy dependence on local civilian sources to perform the daily repair tasks for the base. I think they're just used to having a be totally dependent on outside contractors to come in and do 90% of their work. So they don't really have the tools here to do anything. The central thread that runs through the entire CE unit is teamwork. CE takes on a whole new meaning when seen through the eyes of this crew. Contingency engineering, scrounging. Through the constant efforts of support personnel, carpenters, electricians, and other skilled tradesmen and women, an extensive remodeling project was begun. Well, when we first got in here, there were five brick walls that aren't here now. And they told us to tear the walls down and prepare the building for renovation. Well, when we got into it, and we found out the walls were made out of brick and plaster rather than the drywall and, and lumber that we had anticipated when we first came, uh, we found out the project was gonna be a little more than what we had anticipated. When we got it tore down, there was tile on the walls underneath of what was on top of the, the plaster that was on top of the wall. When we took all that off, the wall was so rough it was almost not repairable. So we had to find some lumber and uh, that's almost impossible in this country because they just don't have trees. And 
we did it with drywall rather than with the plaster that was originally scheduled. And then that way we got a better job with it. But when you come into drywall, you have to have a lot of things that they don't use here, such as corner bead and drywall mud. And so that became another problem. We had to start finding tools and finding materials that weren't on this base, that weren't ordered for any project. And normally with drywall you have a metal corner bead that goes up underneath your mud and tape. And uh, when we asked for corner beads, the Spanish said, what kind of beads? <laughs> and uh, they had no idea what we were talking about. So we started looking around and we found some uh, metal trim that was left over from the metal building that was put up here a year or so back. We used it for for corner bead, and when we ran out of it, and we still had corner bead left to use, we started looking around, the only thing we could find was some wood trim. So now the room is done in wood trim rather than in metal, but it turned out good. Made a good corner, and once it's painted, it'll dress the thing up a little bit. So. What do you call that? Contingency engineering, I think's the word they use. I call it scavenging. <laughs> At Zaragoza, there were 25 work orders assigned to the Kentucky Prime Beef Team. During the two-week stay, 19 were completed as required. The remainder of the projects were left incomplete due to the lack of materials and equipment. The jobs ranged from the simple replacement of light bulbs and fuses to the more complex renovation of several work areas and some construction of new buildings. As you can see, no one was standing around. It was a full two weeks of hard work. In addition to the tradespeople in the unit, another hard-working section of CE is the firefighters. Since many of the Spanish fire department had left for vacation, the Kentucky firefighters were tasked to fill in daily for the protection of the flight line and the base facilities. Some of the most advanced training they received at Zaragoza was on the Air Force's largest fire truck, the P-15. This truck is Staff Sergeant Tim Cox's personal favorite. The system back at the hangar when it discharged. This truck is uh, is capable of doing the same, so it's pretty awesome. It, it is very simple. Uh, whereas with the P4, you sometimes get into problems trying to maneuver it. It gets real stiff trying to move it. But with these, with these cannons, you're moving it with your legs, so it's a, a lot easier to move it around. Also, while working their 24-hour on, 24-hour off daily schedule, the firefighters practiced for the possibility of a major disaster. The searing heat of the Zaragoza Plains combined with this intense pit fire provided some of the most realistic training received during the two-week stay. Okay, guys, let's go get it. It's not going to get any hotter. After a week of hard work, construction, and renovation, a well-deserved break seemed appropriate. Barcelona, Pamplona, and the south of France were several of the areas visited, exposing the world travelers to the beauty and diversity of both old and new Spain.
The second week picked up again as many of the projects were nearing completion. Tech Sergeant Pat Field says that due to the expertise of his crews, this paint shed they've constructed not only meets the need, but exceeds the standard. We're building a lot of paint extension on this building over here behind me, and uh, it's a paint shed. They have no trouble with uh, keeping the material fresh. Uh, it has to sit out in this hot sun, so this supply uh, is uh, giving them a little uh, relief for their paint. We might even be able to park a tank on top of it when we get done. Each project that is completed by the Kentucky Guardsmen is performed with pride and professionalism. The men and women who have gone before them have left an indelible mark on each and every craftsman at Zaragoza. To show their respect for two deceased civil engineers, a tradition was begun that has left small mementos to these fellow guardsmen around the world. The three nickels and the two pennies you see here embedded in the concrete represents two of our uh, older members who are deceased now. The three nickels represent Senior Master Sergeant Lambert, who died of cancer, and we have the two cents for Tech Sergeant Hopwood. We always remember Lambert but by being a triple nickel, and poor old Hopwood always, was always broke. He never had two cents to rub together in his pocket. And it was a standing joke in the unit. And like I say, he's now immortalized here in Spain, Honduras on a flushie, and in Costa Rica. Never forgetting where they're from or where they've been, yet always looking forward to new and exciting challenges, the Kentucky Air National Guard's Civil Engineering Squadron proves once again that the formula for success is teamwork in action.